Welcome back! If you're just joining the series, you may consider watching the setup video so you're ready to keep coding and learning. In this video, we will create a full page blog layout. To begin this lesson, open our project in VS Code. If you are just joining us, you can download the starter project to catch up. See the link in the video description. In the terminal, type the start command npm run start. Let's copy our semantic layout HTML file and rename the copy blog-layout.html. Go to the browser and after localhost colon 3000, add slash blog-layout.html. It will look the same since we haven't changed any content. Let's look at a preview of where we're headed today. You'll see we're going to treat the whole page as a single post out of our blog. So back in VS Code, let's update the title to indicate this is a new page. A common convention is page title, pipe character, website name. So we'll update this to an amazing blog post, pipe, my website. Next, we'll move our blog title out of the H2 in the article into the H1 inside of the header. For blog posts, some important info visitors want to know is who wrote the article and when. Within the header and following the H1, we'll add a paragraph tag with the text by, and you can use your name, pipe character, posted on, and you can pick a date. I'm going with 02-02-2020. There's a couple of text formatting tags we can use to distinguish this information using native browser styles. First, we can add italics around words by using the M tag. So let's add M tags around your name and the date. Then save and take a look at the result. While this information is important, it's okay to de-emphasize it. So let's also wrap all the content inside of the paragraph tag with the small tag. Save, and you'll notice the size has in fact decreased. An interesting thing about the small tag is it will decrease relative to the content tag it's in. So if you place it within the H1, it will be larger than what we see in our paragraph, but smaller than the default H1 size. Okay, let's move to the article content. Let's update the first H2 to say topic introduction. Reminder that we start with an H2 because we already have used our single H1 to identify the page title in the header. Just to add more content, let's copy both the H2 and the P tags and their content and paste below. Then change the pasted H2 to say the main topic. Let's copy paste again but on the new set, update the H2 to be an H3 and change the H3 text to a subtopic to the main one. This is to help you remember that heading tags are hierarchical and should be used sequentially. Following the last P you have, let's add a new tag, block quote. This tag can be used to call out a quote, like from a person, book, or other source, or to emphasize some text from the article. These techniques are mimicking tactics used by newspaper layout designers. Inside the block quote, we'll add a paragraph, and then our quote. Feel free to use your real favorite quote. I'm just going to say, here's a fabulous thing someone said. To semantically attribute this quote, we'll follow the paragraph tag with a footer tag. Whoa, wait, don't we already have a footer on the page? We do, but the footer tag can be included multiple places, as its intent is to be a footer for any sectioning content, and the block quote is its own contained section. Within the footer, we'll use the common convention of a dash, and then add one more tag for semantics, which is site. Finally, within site, we'll put the quote author's name. I'm going to say, someone awesome. Okay, let's save. You'll see the browser indented the block quote and also italicized the author's name that is within sight. So not only are you marking this up semantically, 
you can see how the markup informed the browser to treat it differently stylistically. Now, I feel the article content is running into the footer. So a quick fix we can do is add a border. A way to do that is with a horizontal rule indicated by an HR self-enclosing tag. Self-enclosing means it has no end tag. Let's add the HR between the closing main tag and the starting footer tag, then save. And you can see the borderline has been added. The last thing we'll do to wrap up this lesson is to add our first image. We're going to add it as the first element within the article. Images are included by the IMG tag. This tag is also self-enclosing and uses attributes, like we discussed with links, to identify the source file for the image. The attribute to add the link to an image is SRC, which stands for source. Let's source an image from my favorite free service called Place Corgi. Add the following value to the SRC attribute. HTTP colon slash slash place corgi dot com slash 200 x 150. The numbers on the end are a method that service provides to indicate the size of image you want to use, where 200 is the width and 150 is the height. Save and check out which cute corgi has been added. We need to add two more attributes to our image tag. The first is the alt attribute, which should be a short description of the image. This text will not be visible, but is used by search engines as well as assistive technology used by impaired visitors. I'm going to use the text, Good Corgi Doggo. The last attribute is optional, but let's add the align attribute with the value of left. Save, and you'll see that the image is now positioned to the left of the text content. And the content that is longer than the image is tall has wrapped and continues below and flush with the left of the image. We will refine this appearance when we learn CSS for styling. Stay tuned for the next video where we will create the HTML structure for a common user interface component called a card. Be sure to subscribe! And if you're interested in early access to the final course videos and other future perks, support this project on Patreon. The link is in the video description.